Learning Barriers Most of us know the frustration of encountering roadblocks when taking on a new task. Assembling furniture is a good example. The complex instructions with too much or too little text can be daunting. Making sense of the convoluted images can leave us exasperated, trying to visualize the finished product and see how the parts come together to form a whole. Poor organizational diagrams can result in a confusing pile of assorted hardware heaped on the floor. Often, barriers to furniture construction are not really a function of the buyer's knowledge and skills. Rather, they reflect the manufacturer's failure to design a user-friendly assembly plan. As with furniture assembly, traditional teaching methods and materials can act as barriers that block access to learning for some learners. Methods such as large group lecture, independent seat work, or mandatory group work, while suitable for some students, can pose a barrier for others. Often, these barriers keep learners from participating in educational opportunities at which they might otherwise excel. When used exclusively, these are examples of inflexible methods that are constants in a class and don't allow room for individual variability to support students who find lecture to be information overload or struggle with note-taking or need supports for developing social skills or time management. Failure to support development of skills or offer flexibility means that these methods can create needless barriers to learners with varying needs. Teaching materials can pose barriers as well. Materials such as worksheets and print textbooks, perfectly adequate for some students, can stop others in their tracks. These are examples of inflexible materials that are fixed or permanent and cannot be adjusted to support learners who might need different vocabulary level or method of answering questions, font size, or color contrast. This fixed quality creates needless barriers to learners with varying needs. For example, a student who struggles to read at grade level may find himself at a disadvantage in a science, a class he loves, because his only option for learning about the subject comes from a textbook he cannot read. Failure to plan for learning differences, including diverse cultures and interests, life experiences, and rates of learning, can present serious, needless barriers. Neuroscience tells us that every learner brings to the table their own unique way of learning. Though it is tempting to see barriers to learning as originating with the learner, considering students who can't seem to keep up slow or labeling them as problematic or distractible, we now know that it is important to recognize that all learners have diverse learning needs and preferences. For diverse learners, inflexible methods and materials can be problematic. When student variability meets with inflexible learning environments, barriers are created. Barriers can and should be reduced from the beginning, in the design stage. Instruction should include options, such as a variety of learning methods, options for using flexible materials, a choice of topics and strategies, and multiple pathways to success. The Universal Design for Learning framework guides educators as they design for and maintain high expectations for all students while providing for flexibility in how individual learners get there and supporting strong levels of engagement. It reminds us that everyone can learn, but that doesn't mean everyone can learn in the same way.